In this video, I'll show you how you can explode basically anything in Blender. First, I'm gonna teach you the basic workflow on a simple example. Then on a second, more complicated example, I'll show you how to fix any issues you might have with cell fracture, as well as a cool trick to make the fractures look like wood. For the first example, I just have this simple cube with some thick walls here. And the first step is to fracture the cube using the cell fracture add-on. So just enable the add-on, select the object you want to fracture, go to the particle systems tab. At a particle system, go into the source section, change the emit from dropdown to volume and the end frame to one. After that, set the distribution to random, then go to object, quick effects, and cell fracture. In this window here, you'll want to select own particles as the point source, then increase the source limit, add some noise, and increase the recursion. You can set this setting here to random and that will vary the size of the fractures, but I'll just leave it at small. Lastly, I want all of the fractures organized into a collection, so I'll just type the collection name in this field here. Then hit OK. After that's finished fracturing, we have to make all the fractures rigid bodies. So go to object, rigid body, and add active. Then after that, you need to set the correct mass for each fracture. So to do that, go to object, rigid body and calculate mass. Then select the material the fractures are made out of in the window that opens next. I'll just select concrete. Now if the fractures just explode without any cause once you hit play, then you probably selected mesh as the collision shape. Do not select mesh. Everything else is fine, but mesh causes some weird random explosions. Also, to stop the fractures from falling before any force is applied, go into the dynamic section and check deactivation and start deactivate. Don't forget to copy the changed settings to all selected fractures by right clicking and selecting copy to select it. Now to make the breaking look a lot better, you'll want to kind of connect them together so that they stick together until a certain amount of force is applied. So with all the fractures selected, go to object, rigid body and click connect. Then open this little window here and select chain by distance as the connection pattern. Then then select all these empties that were created and check breakable. Copy to select it. And now they should behave how we want. Of course you can tweak this threshold here to make the fractures either more or less breakable. Now onto the explosion. First add an icosphere, scale it how you need it, then add a particle system to it and make all the particles emit in a very short amount of time, like two frames. Reduce the lifetime, maybe like also two frames and add some normal, random and z velocity. The size of the explosion can be controlled by changing the start and end frames as well as the lifetime and the strength of the velocity. Oh and by the way, if you have a floor, then add some collision with high friction and damping in the physics properties. But once you're happy with the settings, bake it down and once it finishes, select the sphere and go to object, quick effects, quick smoke. Then go to the physics properties tab and change the flow type to fire plus smoke. Increase the sampling sub steps for a more accurate simulation and to avoid breaking up the smoke emission with fast moving objects. Afterwards, set the flow source to particle system and select the particle system. Lastly, check initial velocity and increase it, which will make the movement of the explosion look much smoother as you can see here. Now let's scale up the domain and tweak some settings. So I'll increase the resolution divisions to 64. And if you're wondering why so low, it's because when increasing the resolution too much, the look of the explosion will change drastically. So that's why I'll add most of the detail using the noise setting later down the line. But for now, enable adaptive domain, which will make baking faster because Blender only has to calculate a smaller area, but decrease the threshold quite a bit because else Blender will clip away areas that still have smoke in them. And that just looks bad. After that, increase the heat to five, which will make the smoke rise faster. Then enable dissolve and increase the time a bit to make the smoke stay visible longer, which will make it look more natural. Okay, almost done. Only two settings left. First one, enable noise and increase the uprest factor, which will just multiply the base resolution by the set value. Lastly, I set the type in the cache section to modular, make the baking resumable and bake. Now, if I look at the explosion, it looks pretty good, but it can be made to look more natural by adding some wind and turbulence force fields with low strength. Of course, don't forget to rebake the simulation after each change. Okay, once you're happy with the explosion, create a sphere, add rigid body physics to it, check animated and animated scaling up to be just slightly bigger and faster than the explosion. This will be our shockwave substitute, just like this. Then we'll have to bake the rigid bodies. So go into the scene properties, down to rigid body world, into the cache section and bake. Then you can tweak the breakable threshold to give it the look you want. I'll just increase it by a bit and bake again. With the simulation part pretty much done, I'll show you how to add the smaller debris and dust later. We can move on to shading. So select the explosion simulation domain and go to the shading workspace. Then just add a volume info node, plug the flame into the black body intensity and multiply it by like 100. Pretty basic, but it looks good. You could do something similar with the density, but I find it's not really needed. Now this looks pretty good, but there's still something missing. All the dust and debris that will fly around because of such an explosion. So let's add that. Duplicate the explosion source, go to the particle system section and press this to here to duplicate the particle 
particle system. Increase the particle amount, lifetime and end frame. Then go to the render section and switch the render as dropdown to collection. Afterwards, select the fracture collection as the instance collection and play with the scale and scale randomness until it looks good to you. Then with the small debris particle system object selected, go to the physics property tab and remove the fluke physics property. Then once again, go to object, quick effects and quick smoke. Select the particle system as the source, increase the sub steps, then select the dust smoke domain and increase the resolution. Check dissolve, increase the time, then bake. In the shader, just pick the color of the object that you're exploding and decrease the density to something like this. That was a lot, but that's it. Now you have your dust. And that's also it with the first example. Now with the second one, I won't show you the entire process again, but just how to fix the problem that may occur with cell fracture, as well as the wood trick. First, the fracturing. I mean, does this look properly fractured to you? I, do, I don't think so. Now, the reason that happens is because of non-clean or intersecting geometry. The way you can find where exactly the issue is, is by using a very handy add-on that's included with Blender, which is the 3D print toolbox add-on. So just enable it, select the object that doesn't fracture properly and go into edit mode. Then hit N to open these options here and click on 3D print. And here you will want to hit check all. Then it'll hit you, then it'll show, <laughs> no, it won't hit you. Then it'll show you all the issues with your model. You'll only have to worry about having the non-manifold and bad contiguous edges, as well as the intersecting faces at zero. By the way, when clicking on these buttons, the add-on will automatically select the edges of faces with issues. So just fix them by filling the holes in your model, replacing n-gons with clean square topology, and moving faces around until they don't intersect. Or if you don't feel like fixing the intersecting faces, you can just check debug booleans in the cell fracture window, then select all fractures after fracturing, go to the modifiers tab and check self-intersection right here. Then copy to select it and that should fix all issues caused by self-intersection. Okay, so now I've fractured the bricks and we'll move on to the wooden support beams. So how can you make the fractures look like wood? Well, first add a particle system to the object with the same settings as in the first example. So start and end frames at one, emit from volume and random in this drop down here. After that, open the self fracture dialog again. Here select own particle system as the point source. Then set the value of the axis you want the splinters to stretch on to 0.05 or lower. Afterwards, increase the source limit, add a bit of noise, then increase the clamp recursion factor. Lastly, you'll want to set this setting here to cursor close, small or random and hit OK. And now you should have some nicely splintered wood. The rest of the process is pretty much the same as in the first example. So here's the result. And if this video helped you at all, please consider checking out my Patreon, where you can get the project files of both the examples, the house model I blew up in the second example, three models, these two procedural wood textures and more. So yeah, thanks for considering.